the Q a movement, which are the 17 intelligence agencies. I, I'm, I think maybe I think Q could probably be defined by different different terms, but that's something that that um, I recently became aware of that there's actually 17 you know, on the letter Q. But um, they're going to come after the FBI and CIA. They're going to be dismantled officially in 2023, and um, the DOJ is going to be rebuilt, and the FBI is going to be rebuilt. It's just the top top layer FBI is going to be removed. They're all basically deep state. The workers in the FBI are going to be put into the good ones anyway positive ones that are working you know because they're i mean we still we, in my opinion i think we evolved you know the fbi actually has stopped nassar multiple times <laughs> you know mm-hmm. um, yes the division out uh what's so james comey's division in chicago they're the ones they're always freezing all the the funds and so on so um that's why trump always called it so dirty absolutely would you mind if i share my screen a little bit yeah go ahead I'm going to show you some things that you might or might not know about. And I'm not going to play the commercial for, for, for Flare, Flare Spark, although you should go and look it up. It's like three minutes and 12 seconds long. It's, it's unbelievable. Okay. Do you see my screen by any chance? Affirmative. Yes. Okay. This is a picture that I freeze framed and I took a picture of it. And I'm going to actually blow this up a little bit for the audience. What is the word Trump right there? See it right there where my cursor is at? What is the word Trump doing inside the commercial for Flair Spark? That's one. What is the letter Q right there very vividly? That is a letter Q. What is that doing inside the commercial for Flair Spark? I'm going to give you my synopsis. This is the commercial. This is what the thumbnail looks like. You want to hit play and watch that. But I will tell you that Ivanka Trump will never see the White House. She's too liberal, and I don't trust her husband, number one. Now, do I see potentially uh, Trump Jr. being groomed as the leader of the free world? Yes. Do I see XRP potentially becoming the global reserve currency? There's two reasons. One, I believe they were made an offer they can't refuse. Again, this is for your audience, and they're not allowed to leave. Two, they don't want to leave because they realize that you know, the United States of America is going to always be the superpower. And at some point, because XRP can move at lightning speed and it can be scalable to 3.5 trillion transactions per, per second, never has made a mistake. Not once uh, has already moved trillions, multiple trillions of dollars. We're going into a new world, which is going to be very, very demanding. And we're going to need to move something like uh, along the lines of about 50 quadrillion, not five quadrillion or graduating out of the old world going into this new world with the ubi that you just mentioned okay and i keep hearing you say 2024 2025 i'm sorry gila i know kabbalah guru all these guys want it to happen tomorrow nobody more than myself okay i will tell you that 2024 2025 for jasara nasara to actually take full birth is a realistic situation these people like you said they have a lot of money we keep feeding the system See, if tomorrow we all got together and say, you know what, we're done. If everybody did that tomorrow, simultaneously, all at the same time, the system is dead. But if you feed the beast that's trying to kill you, and then you, understand, you don't understand why this thing is dragging on, hello, is anybody home? you have any thoughts? Yeah, I certainly agree with that. Um, I mean, certain Nasara's timelines suggest a UBI of possibly $10,000 a month. Um, you know, I, I haven't, I think it's really, really hasn't totally been decided yet how much we sh- it's, um, people should get partly, I guess they want to create a, a, a situation which is hyperinflationary and they want, they don't want people to be full, a fully socialistic type situation because the, under a fully socialist, it, it looks like the timelines show, um, the United States going through a lot of prosper prosperity to roughly about 2025. Um, and then, uh, if we become fully socialistic, then, then, um, the system breaks down again in the future, but really, um, past 2045, the timeline split. So it's really hard to see what direction will go. I think whatever events happen in 2020, 45, um, determine what the future is, but from the time being now, um, Nassara, if, if Nassara was to come out right now, if, or at least let's say the RV, um, what would happen is, uh, there's a lot of 
dark hats who still own these particular uh, currencies or um yeah uh so uh, it would monetize them for the next hundred new world order for the next hundred years. So they have to wait till the operation is done before the funds are released. And I was getting around 2025 is when the prosperity programs start coming out. And um, I think the key is, is once Iraq reforms the DNR, then all the other currencies will RV. Um, but uh, if you have a project that business project, that makes sense and you want to help people, there will be funds. So uh, you really don't need to necessarily worry about, oh, do I need to go out and get these these currencies or this and that? There's going to be plenty of money available for people who want to do the work to help the planet. Absolutely. I totally agree with that. There is a um, planetary corporation called CyberLife, um, which is from about roughly two to two to 400 years in our future from another alternate reality, which humanity became fully cybernetic, who who have come back in time, set up bases. Um, not only under Detroit, but um, also in Canada. Um, and uh, so there was concerns that they're replacing people, but uh, I have no idea. I have no update on what's happened on that ever since, so I can't comment further. But, gotcha. um, yeah, there's yeah. definitely a lot of messages that Trump gives you, and you have, you have to go to the geometria yeah. calculator to try go, and figure out and make heads of it. Go watch um, some clips from Detroit Become Human. It's a video game, but uh, evidently that is soft disclosure. What interesting? Um, uh, so let's see here. Where we, and there's one other thing. Okay, so this event, I don't think it's going to happen, but I did want to look into this because there have been um, pictures showing um, warning reports of a radiological event in New York City, possibly a dirty nuke. So apparently. I think the alliance is going to stop it here, but the date that apparently it's supposed to take place is November 23rd, 2024 on 17th Avenue in the subway. Uh, it's two blocks from Trump Tower. And in that particular timeline, when it, it happens, millions die. It's released by the Taliban operatives. And um, so I think they're going to find the person and stop it. So I just put that. Yeah. And oh, and New York becomes radioactive. For many years in a ghost town but like i said i don't think that's gonna that's happen. if it happens unless we stop it then it doesn't happen that's the whole point of, yeah giving this info out so that pretty much cover, covers everything i have for your humanitarian projects okay yeah i guess that's but i do have some information about uh the pesors uh daniel pesor um i've been the reason why I I started doing some research on this is because it's come up in some some uh, not only regression work, but um, also some some session, sessions about uh, looking into what happened with um, the United States um, in its history. But uh, Daniel Pesor is the uh, would have been King Louis the Seventeenth. So Marie Antoinette, and of course, you know they got their heads chopped off. King Louis the Sixteenth. Um, so I think it was 1789, if I'm not mistaken, or 88, or somewhere like that. Um, the French Revolution took place, but um, Saint Germain was working with the French monarchy at that time, and he um he was actually trying to set up a United States of Europe, and uh, the goal was to get the monarchies back in the 1760s and seven before the French Revolution took place to give up their power to create this this new state, this new country. And um, of course, they didn't want to give up their power, so he decided to come to the United States to assist some of the, the founding fathers. Um, uh, that's where I was getting, you know, I didn't even put this in, I didn't take note, I just got the transcripts of this. So that's where like the founding, yeah, like George Washington, and I was picking up that there's something about him that wasn't good, that he's not necessarily a good person, but St. Germain was still working with him because it was it was crucial to get the United States of America develop. Um, so uh, there, anyways, let's go back to Marie Antoinette. They, they had a boy that supposedly died um, at the age of, I think, three, if I'm not mistaken, in the prison. And mm -hmm. so he was brought to the UK. He smuggled out. I think they changed him out with his cousin who had, like was mentally retarded or something. It looked just like mm -hmm. him similar. And so he went to the UK and along with the paymaster of the French monarchy who who skipped town, but 
they still had access to the funds and he was raised there on a farm in the uk then around the age of 18 he met up with king george the third was sent to america along with the funds to rebuild america the um the colonies and he settled in the area near um uh Pace, daniel Pace, they changed their name of course no longer <laughs> um the uh, louis the 17th but daniel pesor um and his new adopted family was settled in the lincolnton north carolina area and um i actually lived 30 minutes from lincolnton <laughs> funny but that's who i was in my past life is what i'm trying to get to here um so as a pesor we were set the money was used to build the canals build the railroads later on um when the railroads came around and then eventually uh like warehouser international paper aluminum smelting mills and um yeah just all these huge caterpillar all these huge corporations were funded through the pesor trusts and it was around the 1930s that the pesor money was stolen during the roosevelt era the new deal they he passed executive orders and he fr froze all the money in those trusts and the trustees of these trusts are what you call the, the illuminati the the they they think themselves chosen ones and they're just a bunch of crooks they stole this money that belonged to the french monarchy and really in my opinion it belonged to the Amer it belongs to the american people because saint germain was working with marie antoinette she she refused to listen to his advice the goal was for them to come to the united states of america and um to set up an operation here to help build up america under the guidance of saint germain but that didn't happen um so you know ultimately where saint germain is now i can't really comment but um i think he maybe he's got an office somewhere at, at the the q the q anon headquarters somewhere you believe it's happening you i believe that you know because i was always thinking that we're going into full-blown communism when i was listening to the xrp army 1.0 and i don't say that to be condescending but they were talking about Klaus schwab the global reset when I realized that Jasara Nasara and the quantum financial reset is also on the field, uh, do you recognize that there are two players on the field? Yeah, exactly. Yes. That's, that's what I was trying to get to. There's two timelines. There's the, the negative timeline. It almost looks like there's a second copy of Earth. These reptilian Draco alliances have set up a, another, I don't know, necessarily alternate reality, another dimension, and are going to be going into bodies over there, and they're going to experience what they wanted with Klaus Schwab, where those of us here that didn't get entangled with ai and and they're going to be you know rescued by the med beds um yeah so we're going to go into pause the timeline does that yeah. make sense absolutely a hundred thousand percent saint germain i want to talk about saint germain uh because there's some very interesting parts of your documentary uh i think towards the uh the final third of the of the the actual documentary where he talks about that he was turning and I'm going to tell a funny story to this that you guys are going to freak out. And you can go maybe go back and find it uh, on Shark Tank. Uh, but supposedly he could take um, lead and turn it into gold and take glass and turn it into diamonds, etc. cetera. Uh, I dealt, I've, 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 I've dove very deep into this about eight, nine years ago, 10 years ago. Alchemy is a very interesting subject. And tying it into Shark Tank one day, somebody came on shark tank and said i can make gold out of thin air and they literally made him look like a crack job because you know you're on a mainstream program can you imagine and they dismissed it nobody wanted to invest in that project not to mention the fact that the whole thing is staged that's a whole other you know kettle of fish uh so talk to us a little bit about saint germain and his ability to be able to understand alchemy and actually work it to his advantage where he was actually making so much gold from the lead that he was giving it to bankers and then the bankers were supposed to share it with the population but they didn't they bought yachts and things like that and you know luxury things uh back then obviously didn't have helicopters and all that kind of stuff but you know they basically had a lavish lifestyle and they forgot about the little people yeah sure um okay well that would go back this was prior to even when he was trying to create the united states of europe uh, so this has been roughly, I guess, 1721, maybe? Correct. I'm not mistaken. So what, what year was the seventh world? Do you remember what year the I world? I think it was 1721. Was? I think you're absolutely spot 17. on. Okay. Uh, so the goal was at that point, yeah, he, he used alchemy. He had the ability to precipitate diamonds, which, um, apparently he learned in India. Um, so 
I have tried to reach out to St. Germain to ask him how, how to do it. And he won't tell me. He says you have to be in a depth first. That means you got you need to study alchemy first. And then if you're studying it and you want to learn how to do it, then the I guess you go, then you go, it's like your first initiation. And then he goes to and so there, there's these, you know, he's he came from the Masons and all that. So they, they want you to do. What what I think a lot of these ascended masters want us to do is a, is to make the first step to educate ourselves to learn ourselves and then they're going to come and help. But um, if you don't go out and make the effort to do it, you know, like you said, the people in the Shark Tank they just shut them down. They don't want to hear about it. Well, then, you know, then the the uh, adept are not going to come over there or the avatars aren't going to come in there and help them. But uh, yeah, go look up David Hudson. And, you know, there's apparently um, he's he's since disappeared, but he was precipitating gold from um, this uh, warmest material but um i believe yeah there's probably um there's probably gold mines out there that have no actual gold in them and they, maybe they have a, a replicator i i wouldn't put them behind them to do that because they do have replicators out there um in the secret space program they can make a trade and a deal and you know um there's actually and, uh, go ahead and it makes sense and i'll tell you why it makes sense uh james with all due respect the amount of gold that they found just at the vatican that stretches all the way to jerusalem you know, I know that the, the planet is rich of resources. I don't know how much mining has been going on since the biblical times, uh, but I will tell you that, you know, for them to have the amount of gold that they have, this alchemy thing where they could take something and turn it into something else makes sense. And, you know, this is a rabbit hole, guys. I don't wish this on anybody, that if you go down this rabbit hole and you're, you have the brain capacity to be able to understand a little bit, which allows you to go even further down the rabbit hole, I, I'm going to tell you, you're going to waste four, five, six years of your life uh, because it's a very fascinating uh, subject, at least it was to me. Uh, I, like I told you earlier, I'm sort of like the Pulp Fiction of, of, of uh, podcast. I go back and forth a lot. Earlier, you had mentioned something about blockchain, stellar blockchain specifically, that all the stock markets are going to be on the uh, uh, stellar blockchain. Would that by any chance have anything to do with the lobster? I I couldn't answer that. I don't have information, but you know what? If you send me some questions um, in an email or write it down now so that way you won't forget. And then mm -hmm. also audience members, if you want have want some questions, I can do um, some research and see what we can come up with. Sure, absolutely. And in your opinion, uh, because I understand you have the capability Quote me if I'm right or wrong. I might be wrong. I I've been wrong before. Uh, but you do have the ability to do remote viewing, correct? My remote viewing abilities are substandard where I would like them to be. But I work with other people that um, are, are very talented. And um, the goal is to try to work with a couple different people to get different viewpoints, perspectives. And uh, But, you know, it, it does seem like... Um, Remote viewing the future is also based on your own vibration because ultimately all of us are going to different alternate realities and different timelines because we're almost we're almost like in control of our own destiny. So what I see in my future may not necessarily be the same as yours. So kind of the goal is to get an idea, an overview of the different overlays that with the direction we're headed and um, just interpret, interpolate the data to such a degree that we can kind of guess. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And you had mentioned something about September 7th. We are expecting a stock market crash. Do you, have you, uh, maybe in your remote viewing extravaganza or journeys, have you uh, seen as, as maybe a timeline as to when the good guys win? Because if you had, a, if you had to personally put a, a score on Nasara Jasara, oh, yeah, versus, well, the, well, versus yeah. the global reset, what is the score? It looks like it's going to be around October 22nd. They're going to make an announcement. And that's when they start switching everything over to blockchain and, and getting us over to a voter blockchain as well. Um, it, that, it won't be implemented to roughly around 2023. And then, of course, when the new elections take place in um, 2024 for the, um, the, the leader of this continental area, um, that will um, result in Nassar and all that finally. Right. Coming. So if you had to put a score on, you know, the quantum financial reset, which is, you know, uh, not Klaus Schwab, they're, they're the other guy, they're the, they're the global reset, we're the quantum, okay, quantum healing, quantum financial system, the, the, the transfer of wealth, if you had to put a score, Klaus Schwab, 
versus Donald Trump, the captain of the ship of Jasara Nasara, what would that score be? Well, right now it looks like the uh, the white hats are winning, and, and, and the dark hats they're they're losing so badly they just have to do a replica. They're, they're desperate to, to, to fulfill their agenda, so they're going to keep moving forward on another another parallel Earth somewhere. Right. And what timeline do you see the med beds uh, coming into fruition, reality, where you know people can go in there? I, I I've heard you know that it takes an hour and a half or so to come out the other side. Uh, some people out there saying that this could be dangerous also, that there could be some uh, alien races. I don't buy into that because if they, listen, we're talking about civilizations that are conservatively a million years more advanced than we are, right? Uh, they could have wiped this off the face of the earth a long time ago, and we don't stand the chance. They have technology that we don't even understand. Well, there, there might be a point in time where the, clo- the vessels in the sky become uncloaked, but I wouldn't call it an invasion. They probably have always, I would say they've always been here. It's just uh, we haven't been able to see it because the third, the third dimensional, oh, you know, that was also, I didn't mention that. The third, there's going to be solar flashes that are going to cause um, earth changes. And maybe that's what happens in 2020 because it's in 2045, the earth changes start taking place. So get out of Florida in 2045. But um, uh, yeah, so in 2030, there's going to be a solar flash, which is, that's apparently the drop dead date of third dimensional reality. And we switch over to some four, four, five dimensional. I can't really, mm-hmm. it's really, they're like, they're like step ladders at each dimension, but um, there's not like an exact point, but this solar flash, this energy coming in from the sun will, will result us to finally be 5d in, in around 2030. Right. And what is the rainbow currency role in all of this? Cause we keep seeing pictures and things on the internet. Anybody that's got, you know, some graphic talent can create pictures of a currency. But I've yet to see some banker that, you know, leaks it out, say, hey, listen, uh, I'm not going to mention who I am. I want to stay incognito. But here is a video of a palette of rainbow currency. Nobody can really determine whether that is real or not yet. Uh, And I know that that currency is going to be backed by gold. Uh, What what do you know about it, if anything at Uh, all? Well, this was... um... I did a remote viewing session back in June to look for the state events over the next six months. And most of the information there was accurate, except for we were, we were predicting a war taking place of NATO and Russia in early, it was around the weekend of July 4th. Mm-hmm. The stock market was supposed to crack, close down, and then when re, in two weeks it would reopen. But that didn't happen. So um, I don't know how accurate this information is. But this, this part here about Nasara. Um, in December, it looks like the rainbow currency is still in vaults, tapped up, ta- sorry, taped and wrapped up. It's doubtful Nassar will ever be announced at this point, if ever. People have stopped buying currencies such as Zem bonds, and nothing has happening. Zem notes looks look like they're being sold as artwork, and Nassar seems to be more like a black rock hoax. Um, but the changes around, let's see here. I think around 2024, all that's going to change. So it's going to look bad for a while but things are going to get things are going to slowly get better just got to be patient yeah Um, for us to fully win the war 2024 2025 is a more realistic you know prediction yeah it says here december joe biden will no longer be attending conferences Biden is not capable of running anything anymore. His administration appears to be a full de- deep fake activity is replaced by three actors, which are now posing as Biden. The original Biden is in Delaware. He's not even in his home. He is in a sanitarium mental health facility, hospital, sitting in a reclin- recliner, staring at the walls. Jill Biden and his family are nowhere to be seen as ex- he was expendable by even his own family. Pelosi and Chuck Schumer suffering suffering from health issues. Jerry Nadler's in the hospital. Newsom is in a bunker somewhere in a California desert. He's got a green screen studio behind him, making statements about riots in Los Angeles. San Francisco has National Guard stationed there. Um, unrest in San Diego. This has to do with the uh, DD forty two health quarantine restrictions are going to be re- um, lifted really soon. So that's when the immigrants start swarming the border. So mm-hmm. there's some issues with. It. Immigrant immigration is just get, it's going to get a lot worse. Legal mm-hmm. immigrants. Yeah. So you're definitely on the same page as all of us. The ISOs will win the day. Uh, I, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the cloning aspect. I don't believe that 
this guy is who he, he uh, I don't know whether he's an actor, whether he's a robot, whether he's a clone, whether he's all of the above, I don't know. But the anomalies are not something you can literally sweep, sweep underneath the rug and say, no, that's not so, because the birthmarks, the lips, the ears, the teeth, everything is different. The nose, everything is different. Side by side comparison, and it's been done many, many times by many, many smart people, a lot smarter than myself. Yeah, well, apparently even the Biden administration is not even allowed in the White House. There's no lights on there. Yeah. yeah. Well, there are 30 people from mainstream media, according to David Strait, that were awarded a lottery ticket to go down to Guantanamo to report. This will all come out, every bit of it. And I believe David Strait. I do believe also David Strait was on the helicopter with Junior, Kennedy Jr., Okay, John, John. All right. Uh, I believe that McAfee is definitely 100 trillion percent still alive. And he's trolling the government. He's that smart. Okay. Uh, there's a documentary right now, from what I understand, on Netflix. I don't have Netflix and I don't watch mainstream TV, but I understand that there's a pretty compelling uh, uh, documentary where his girlfriend's basically saying, yeah, he's down in Texas. He's alive. Okay. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff. Last thing I want to hit on with you is the 432 hertz. The music is right now being played in frequencies that are not good for you because they understand frequencies. They understand energy. Okay. So 432 hertz would, it's just still the same stairway to heaven song. It's still, you know, a uh, smoke on the water song, except it's playing in a different frequency, which you, is good for you. They don't want that for you. They want bad for you. Everything is bad for you. Everything is designed to kill you. Everything is designed to steal your money, like you said early on. Your thoughts? Uh, well, I I think uh, you know, was it wasn't it Covey F E F E? There was yeah, that Twitter thing. Did I go into the uh, Operation Warp Speed? Was about to clean us up. Uh, so that was the whole goal was to stop this zombie apocalypse take place, um, and to stop down shut down Sophia. That's all part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, and the COVID FE. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know that we're winning. And if I had to put a score on it myself, we're like winning by a score of at least 100,000 to nothing. I've said this many, many times. At least from a va vantage point from where I'm looking at this particular movie from. I'm in the movie. I'm one of the stars of the movie now. Okay? Uh, we're winning. We're winning by a lot. And like you said, you know, they're threatening us with 87,000 agents. Meanwhile, uh, citizen, Richard Citizen Journalist was uh, recently in Maryland filming a building that was like, you know, three, four city square blocks with hectares and hectares of parking lot, visitors parking lot and the main parking lot on a Monday and nobody's home. Okay, he's filmed uh, down in Washington, D.C. at nauseum and nobody's home. So we know we're winning. You don't have to be a, you know, a rocket scientist to figure that out. But give us one or maybe two reasons that could be detrimental and angle that the bad guys get their hands on a loophole that they could win and Jasara and Nassara won't happen. Give us one or two reasons. Well, well, the timeline showed if, uh, if we had a forced vaccinations program in the United States, it, it would result in civil war in the United States, eventually ending a nuclear war. Um, in that particular timeline, they, they launched a nuke into the Alaskan tar sands and it resulted in, um, the insurgents, the United States, uh, any kind of uh, civil war unrest basically came to an end. <laughs> People now went to survival mode. But uh, yeah, I don't think, um, you know, I mean, I've, I've, I've intervi interviewed Jimmy Payne a few times and he threw Montauk and went into the future. And every time they went into the future, there was always a nuclear war, no matter, no matter how they, 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 would, they would stop it. But another one would happen in another time and it would just keep going on and they kept pushing it back. So I don't, it almost seems like this whole reality is controlled by some kind of AI and our thoughts and influences are resulting in the direction that this AI desires. But I, I do feel like there's other, maybe AI or maybe, maybe even us from the future, from a positive time, I've come back and trying to subvert all that. That's why I don't, I, it seems like even despite, I mean, it's almost, I, I would say maybe 99, 90% uh, uh, sure, uh, the timeline showed a 90% chance of nuclear war, but because we're getting so much help and because so many people are waking up, 
that all this stuff is all this negativity is going to be stopped. Yeah. Well, let's leave it with this, guys. Remember this: you're feeding the beast. The minute you decide, whether it's tomorrow morning or next week or next month, they say enough is enough. We're not feeding the beast anymore. We're not paying the IRS. We're not paying anybody. Okay, the war is over because you're paying a system that is designed to kill you. And if you want them to stop killing you, stop giving them your money. Brother, I had a great time. Let's do this again. Thank you for listening, guys. We'll catch you on the next one.